Hi, I'm Sean with Backflow Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Today I want to talk about the Backflow Test Kit, specifically the Midwest Backflow Test Kit. I did a video on the 845 5-valve test kit a couple years ago, but today I want to talk more about all of the Backflow Test Kits that Midwest makes. The reason is that we are an authorized calibration repair and service center for Midwest and have been for at least 30 years. I've been doing this for 25 of calibrating and selling these gauges. Midwest has done a great job getting these test kits into the training classes so that when you go through to get certified to test backflow assemblies, you're practicing on a Midwest test kit, which causes you to be comfortable with that gauge and, and like it. It's a very economical gauge and it tests all the backflows, all the sizes, um, RPs, double checks, PVBs, spill resistant, um, any testable backflow assembly that's out there. So today I want to talk about the 845 family and the 835 and I'm going to mention the 830. That's probably their oldest uh, gauge that they made that's differential used for the backflow testing. I don't stock that gauge. I don't stock the 835 and I don't stock one of the 845s because they don't get ordered very often. And I don't want calibration running down on the shelf and I don't want warranty running down on the shelf. All the manufacturers that I'm aware of, the warranty begins from the date that it's built, not the time that you receive it. So that's important. I want to be able to sell you a quality gauge straight from the factory and most of the ones that I keep on the shelf, it's only about two or three weeks since it's been calibrated. So let me talk about the 845 test kit first. They make it in a two valve configuration, a three valve configuration, and a five valve configuration. And some people don't know what that means, even though they've been through the backflow class. And so I just want to quickly explain that the valves are how many knobs are on it. There's two bleed valve on the five valve and three control valves. On the three valve, there's just going to be the three valves on the top of it, the high, the low, and the vent. And the two valve is just going to have two valves. So that's important to know. The other thing I want to tell you is that they all come with the same things. They all come with a carrying case. The 845 comes with these with some foam mounted in the top and the bottom and the 835 comes with this uh, black carrying case. The 830 is the exact same case as this and obviously the two valve is going to be the same case as this. And then they come with the gauge obviously. They come with bleed tubing uh, where appropriate. So it wouldn't come on the three valve or the two valve but it does on the five and the 835 and the 830. They all come with hoses, and these hoses are the rubber hoses. For a short time, they made them with a poly-type material that was very stiff, and people didn't like them. But they all come with hoses that are color-coded, red, blue, and yellow. They also have these filter housings on there with replaceable and or cleanable filters, which is the tester's responsibility from time to time. But you can also just buy new filters. Those are available. Also want to point out that it's important the direction that you hook your gauge up. This filter that's inside this housing is a cone shape and when you've got this hooked up right all the debris will collect on the outside of it. If you hook it up backwards then all that debris is getting put into the inside of that filter and it doesn't clean it out. If you take your hoses on and off your gauge, instead of leading it, leaving it attached to the, the gauge in your case, and you're putting it on uh, different directions, then you can take that uh, debris that's inside the housing of the filter and wash it into your gauge. So always put it on the same direction, and I would always recommend that it's filter backflow. So this short end here is the one that you want closest to the backflow and the other end to your gauge. I also recommend disconnecting it every single time, but that's up to you. But especially in the winter time, it's important to disconnect it. It's amazing how much water gets held into the gauge and into these hoses when you leave it attached. And if you send a gauge to me in the winter time with all that attached and not drained properly, then you're going to freeze your gauge in shipping. 
So you need to be careful of that. A carrying strap that you can, it's all rubber banded right now, a carrying strap that you can hang it around your neck, over your shoulder, over a pipe, uh, to be able to test with it, to carry it. Uh, it comes with um, a set of standard adapters. And for the 845, they're just in these lids up here on the top. And it comes with a set three of the three quarter bushing by quarter bushing, three of the half inch by quarter bushing, and a set of quarter inch adapters. So this adapter will go in the two inch and smaller backflow assemblies just like this. You'll have to Teflon them and wrench them in and out. Or you use this adapter to put into either the half inch or the three quarter inch bushing. If you're doing a lot of testing, you'll either want to buy a lot of these and just put them in and leave them or buy the quick connect fittings. And we'll, I'll put a link in there for that. Also, when you buy your test kit, there'll be some sales literature for that, uh, those quick connect fittings inside. So they do come calibrated from the factory. It's underneath the foam in the 845 cases, and it's just inside the cover of the 835. And I'll open the 835 here in a second. So the calibration certificate, a piece of sales literature that talks about the quick connect fittings, a sight tube, bleed valve, and a set of testing instructions that are laminated. But I would be careful and make sure that these are your instructions for your area. If they are not, don't use these. Use the ones that you learned in your testing class. Now, the 835 is the exact same gauge as the 845. The difference is, is it comes mounted into this case and it has a quick, relate, a quick release buckle that you can easily take this gauge out of the case. And I'm just gonna remove that hose. There's a pin that's back here that you just easily undo. The buckle is there, you undo that, and now the gauge comes out. The only difference between the 845 and the 835 is they've got these little metal clips on the bottom and on the top that allow it to be securely mounted back into this case. And it's just as easy to put it back in as it is to take it out. I didn't do the pin, I don't have my glasses on, but it's buckled back in there. Uh, this also, you can release the case if you needed to. If you didn't want to take it out and you could carry it around like that. It's got a nice carry handle on it. One thing I want to tell you about these 835 and the 845 five valve kits is some people will say, I got my gauge but these bleed valves are loose. And the reason why they are loose is because it's just a round fitting that goes down into the uh, housing of the body with an o-ring sill and so it, it'll wobble. The only thing that's holding this in place is there's a groove on this valve that the bolt that goes through the two body housings is holding that in place so it doesn't go blowing out the top. Just want to make you aware of that. It's not a defect with it. There's nothing wrong with your gauge but that's the way it is. I hope that this has been helpful to help you see what the gauges look like, what they come with, explain about the bleed valves that are kind of loose on there, the importance of the filter on your gauge hose and how you hook that up. Always remember to drain your gauge, especially in the winter time. Um, and hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight as you're making a selection of your gauge that you want to test with. People use these for years and decades at a time and I'm still calibrating. I think these came out in 2003 and I'm still calibrating some of those. I'm even calibrating some of those that are older than that that are previous models to these. And one other thing I want to tell you is the serial number is on the face of the gauge and it has an SN in front of it. It's just a sticker that's on there and it's eight digits. The first four digits are the month and the year that it was built. So that will help you to know how old is your gauge and also help keep in your mind when should it be calibrated. 
Keep in mind calibration is something that's recommended annually, and unless your jurisdiction says you need to have it calibrated, you don't need to. However, you are responsible for the accuracy of your tests. I would think that you would want to have that calibrated. And Midwest has set up service centers around the country that should be no more than two days shipping time from wherever you're at. So we get them from all over the country. We're happy to do them. Um, but if you go to their webpage, uh, backflowtestkits.com, there is a link for calibration service centers that you can look for your region on there. I hope that you find this to be helpful. If you have any comments, please leave them below, or you can email me or call me. That information is on the last slide of this video. Please click the notification button so that you can be notified every time we have a new video. Thank you very much, and have a good day.